What's going on YouTube? It's Blake. I'm back for a new video. A little different background today. But basically today I'm going to be talking about do you need a coach? Now a coach for powerlifting, weightlifting, bodybuilding, just about anything in the gym, right? And now my answer may be a little bit different than most people's just because I've gone without a coach for so long and I have had a couple coaches along the way, but I feel like my opinion on the whole subject is just so much different than most people's. So let's get into it. So first off, I'm gonna start with power lifters, right? So do you need a coach when you're power lifting? Now, obviously I feel like everybody at some point will need a coach. You know, you could even be the best and uh, still need to get a coach at some point, right? But for me with powerlifting, I've really gone without a coach throughout my whole career up until now. Now I got my college coach and he's really going to be helping me out, uh, just get me to that next level, you know. But I've gotten up to a almost 1,900 pound meat total having no coach at all, right? So do you exactly need one and when do you need one? Well, so for me, I was really blessed and grateful to have my dad my, and my dad just knew so much about powerlifting like before I was even into it you know what I'm saying so my dad was able to show me so much along the way just beginning not even like as a coach but he was able to show me like hey you don't just bench press every day right you don't just do bicep curls every day but hey you don't just do bicep curls once a week you know you gotta he, he showed me just kind of like the basic layout and for a lot of people I feel like when they go to the gym they might have fellow gym partners and gym goers that know just as much as my dad knew, you know, so they could just get information from the people around them and they don't have to consider them that coach. You know what I'm saying? Because most coaches, what cost money, you know, some of these really high end coaches, you know, will cost you 150 bucks a month. And I mean, I find that that's a little bit, that's a little bit far unless they're like the communication is great, but Really for a coach, it, it comes down to who are the people around you and do you feel like you even need a coach? You know, so many people told me like while I was coming up, go get a coach or go get a coach. Imagine what you could do with a coach. And it was just always like, I, I know what I'm doing, you know, like I was taught very well. I um, I had some great people around me, like my, my gym owner, you know, I wouldn't call him my coach, but my gym owner, Yanni, he was just. He, he just always had like a pretty good answer and explanation for me, you know, like for the longest time in my bench press, I was taking the bar down because I was super narrow grip. I was taking the bar down and the bar was just drifting straight back towards my face. He told me just work on, you know, driving a straight path. And that's really something like that a coach would tell you, but that was just more of like a, a like a training partner. So now I guess it comes down to do you have training partners that know that much, right? Like if you're a complete beginner, do you know, do you have training partners that are willing to train with you and help you learn that knowledge so you can recognize these things by yourself? You know, a lot of times calling my weights, once I got up, up high, it couldn't just be called by myself. I couldn't just pick my weights all by myself. I had to figure out, okay, where, where do I think I am? And, and okay, uh, like I talked to Yanni, Yanni, where do you think I am? What do you think I have in the tank today? And that was like the biggest help for me was just having people around me. So I would say if you have people around you and you're in a similar position that I'm in, I'd say that you really don't need a coach, right? But now if you come from like a smaller gym, you know, you might be like one of the only power lifters there. Well, then I'd say maybe you could reach out and look to get a coach, you know, maybe not even like like top tier level coaching, but just someone who, who appears to, to have a good knowledge themselves, right? They, they've done what they're gonna ask you to do. And just someone who, who, who can show you that they have helped people before and they have helped people grow and they are a decent coach and they have some knowledge. You know, you don't need a world-class coach at all, but you need somebody who's gonna pay attention to detail, respond to, just about all your videos, you know, you don't need a response on like your week two secondary bench. You know, you might not need a response on that, but you know, week two primary bench, you want a response. Week two primary deadlift, you want a response. Um, and, and so just stuff like that. You need a coach that's gonna be attentive to you. Getting coaching with no feedback is just like the worst thing I could recommend. 
If you're going to pay somebody to write you a customized program, but they don't watch anything of what you're doing, I would just never do it. I would just go buy, go buy a program. I would just go on Google, look up Small Live Junior, and I'd run that, you know, regardless if you think that's a good program or not. I would do all of those before I actually pay someone to do a customized coaching for me when they're not looking at any of my lifts, they're not looking at my videos, they might just see my videos pop up on Instagram, and they don't really care if you get the lift or not. Because it needs to be a mutual thing between a coach and an athlete when it comes down to, okay, so the athlete's failing, how does this change to the coach? You know, okay, so the um, coach is failing, what does this change to the athlete, right? So it needs to be like mutual. Like the coach needs to want the athlete to succeed as bad as the athlete wants himself to succeed. If it's not like that, then the coach just isn't there. The coach isn't attentive. The coach doesn't care about what's going on overall, if you see what I'm saying there. So, and the next thing is like bodybuilding and weightlifting. Now, I don't know anything really about weightlifting, but I can tell you on something like weightlifting, where it is so difficult, like that form, the like throwing the weight around, it is just, weightlifting is a whole nother animal. How do you, how do you go up approach weightlifting like that? Well, the answer is pretty much the same as powerlifting, except you really gotta look at, are you going to like a weightlifting specific gym? Because all gyms will have uh, places for weightlifting, you know, like a lot of commercial gyms will have like the weightlifting floor setups, but that doesn't mean that they're going to have people who really know weightlifting like that. You need to have people that really know weightlifting like that because the chance of injury on something like weightlifting is so incredibly high. Now, weightlifting, that, that's like, that's like life-threatening injuries, right? If you throw the bar over your head and that falls on your neck, you know, you can paralyze yourself. You, that's chance of death, you know what I'm saying? So that's very serious. So I would recommend a beginner in weightlifting getting a coach. Or if you don't have a coach, you need to be going to a weightlifting specific gym where there's weightlifting specific lifters that know everything about the sport. Because I, I mean, people might disagree with me on this, but I would find weightlifting much more, um, much more serious, much more injury. You could see more injuries happening from bad form than you can in powerlifting, right? So in powerlifting, somebody deadlifts bad, they could herniate a disc. You know, in weightlifting, somebody does the wrong form and they pull this weight up to their neck, they fall backwards and that weight literally like crushes their neck in. You know, terrible things can really happen. And um, so weightlifting is an amazing sport. I find it super cool to watch, but that is one of those niche things where it's so dangerous. I would just recommend if you aren't surrounded with people who really know what they're doing, you know, not even just like amateurs, but people who really know what they're doing, I would recommend you get a coach for that. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is bodybuilding. When do you know that you need a bodybuilding coach? And to be honest, bodybuilding, I think out of the three, is probably the last thing that you'll need a coach for. Because if you could just understand the basics, right? Everybody at the gym mainly is bodybuilding. You know, regardless what they're doing, if they're training for like football, they're training for powerlifting, weightlifting, baseball, or they're still building their body. So, so many people will have the most idea of what bodybuilding is, you know, creating your structure, your physical abilities, whatever that might be. So you could get a lot of knowledge from the average gym, right? You could go to your local LA Fitness, Lifetime, Planet Fitness, yep, even Planet Fitness, seriously, people make jokes about that. If you go to Planet Fitness and you ask your trainer for a tip, I bet you it'll probably be pretty right. You know, most things about just bodybuilding and stuff like that, it's pretty self-explanatory, especially on the machines. Like if you see a bicep curl, you look at the machine right here, it tells you how to perform the bicep curl. You do the bicep curl on the machine. I mean, there's your guide right there. The guide is literally right in front of you for something like that. So for bodybuilding, I would say you probably really don't need a coach until you get to that point of, okay, I wanna make this more serious. You know, I wanna, I wanna compete in bodybuilding. Okay, so now you need a coach to help you pose. You need a coach to help you build certain muscles to look, you see what I'm saying? So once you get really deep into the sport of bodybuilding, I think that is when you get a coach. But if you're just bodybuilding for health to make yourself look better, you know, and achieve this like as, as best as you can naturally. But when you go to even compete naturally, you know, you're still passing that boundary. You still want you still want a coach to help you take you to the next level. 
unless yet again you're surrounded by people that are like I have BB Pro bodybuilders, you know, then maybe you won't need a coach. But if you really want to learn posing, you know, the whole nine yards, I don't know that much about that stuff. But if you really want to take it past, if you want to compete in anything, pretty much, is when you can start looking for a coach. Powerlifting is the only one where I would argue you may not need a coach even if you do compete, which was just the case with me. But there you go, guys. That's my opinion on coaching and do you need a coach? Let me know what you thought about this in the comments below. I'm interested to hear what you guys think because I really think most things you can do without a coach unless it is something like weightlifting where it is like extremely dangerous. You know, powerlifting could be just as dangerous, but you probably would see more beginner injuries with weightlifting than powerlifting. So yeah, just let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this. Offer your opinion. If you have a different opinion, let me know too. I'd be really interested in hearing it. I haven't talked to too many people about this. This is just my personal opinion. So yeah, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out for today's video. Peace.